Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video by the Giant Nation. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm talking to you from Ningbo, China, south of Shanghai by a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to do just a quick update video on what's going on because there's a lot going on. Although my channel hasn't been very busy, uh, there are a lot of things going on. Um, <laughs> It's funny because I did this CCTV trip so long ago and it has so much content that I can give to you guys, but I've been waiting for a few pieces of the puzzle to fill in before I can uh, uh, really start producing those videos. Once they get started, I'll have probably, um, geez, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably have two or three months worth of content for you guys to chew on on this channel. Uh, fun stuff, traveling around, meeting interesting people and doing interesting things. But until I get the final piece of the puzzle, I don't want to start releasing that. And I've also agreed with the CCTV people that I won't deliver that content until their show premieres, which will be in the beginning or middle of May. <laughs> Not my choice, guys. But I, I, you know, they're really helping me out. Those that crew over there, they're really, really nice people. And so um, I'm waiting until they start delivering their episodes. So that that series, that package of videos, is going to come um, at a future date. <laughs> okay. So I have some notes here that I want to go through. We're going to talk about what's been going on, what's been going to be going on in the future. We have a lot of things going, so let's let's get into it, okay? So um, upcoming, as a matter of fact, in just a few days, I'm going to be leaving on the first of two uh, filming trips um, that will populate this channel quite a bit. So um, I am... I'm hesitant, hesitant to say how quick I will produce episodes from this trip, but they won't be like the CCTV trip where I'm kind of holding back content. Actually, I will probably be producing a lot on this channel for you to see. Um, so I need to give you guys a heads up because otherwise you won't know <laughs> what's going on. Um, there are two trips for two two agencies here in China. The first one is for a, uh, a group called uh, CGTN, which is like the big um, uh, foreign and news and uh, travel content producer. It's like CCTV and CGTN um, are the big kahunas. And uh, they contacted me a while back. They wanted me to go on a trip. Uh, they contacted also Jason from Living in China. Um, if you guys know who he is, he and I will be together, but not 100% together. They're actually going to have me shooting some stuff and then him shooting some stuff and then we will converge and then we will diverge and then converge again so we won't have so many opportunities to produce together but let me tell you some of the details on this trip because it's it's kind of interesting so we'll be doing Sanya Wani uh, uh, Haiko which is in Sanya um, uh, in the Hainan province so we'll be exploring exploring Hainan which is something I have a few videos with me and Annie and Eva going to some different places in Hainan, but I don't have a a lot. So this will be an interesting chance to dig into a really beautiful part of China. It's uh, sort of subtropical. It's warm. I'm sure going to you're going to see a change in my skin tone over the course of the uh, of the trip, which I'm looking very much forward to. I need some vitamin D in my life. Um, so, so it will also be in uh, Yangjiang, Shantou, um, in the Guangdong province, and we'll just be meandering around. It's actually going to be a pretty packed trip. Packed trip. It will be with an entire crew from CGTN. It's going to have a lot of people involved. I'm going to be producing a lot of content for CGTN, so you're going to see my my face on some official channels. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to be uh, like political in nature. It's going to be like how China has been advancing over the last few years, what things have been improved on. Um, the selling features for me was that we're going to go to the coast and we're going to learn about like coral protection, some things that China have been doing to try to protect the coral reefs in that area and propagate coral reefs. So that's going to be cool. We're going to see some of the like really big um, free trade uh, port areas where like I, they gave me a lot of opportunities to say what I'd like to do. I'd like, I'd like to go up in some of those cranes that go and pick up the uh, um, the, the shipping containers, and I'd like to kind of see the life of, of a shipping container crane operator. I, I offer them a bunch of ideas, they look at them, they offer me a bunch of their ideas, and we meet in the center. 
Uh, so we're doing a lot of marine ecology protection stuff. Um, we were going to go to, uh, let's see here, the yachting industry. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but I used to live on a yacht in the Caribbean. Uh, I was the first mate, uh, like basically like Gilligan on a really, really big yacht that was privately owned by an old rich guy in the United States. And I, I, I took care of his boat with the captain and a stewardess. It was a three person crew. And so I had a real relation. I was in Miami. I was in Fort Lauderdale. I went to the Bahamas and I, I like, Man, I should make a video specifically about some of those stories. I think I told us some of those stories, but a nice, it's a really, really interesting life. If you have kids or anything, encourage them to do this because it really exposes you to not only the opulent wealth in the world and what some people really have and other people don't have, but it also shows you that even the people who have you know, like like this uber wealthy. A lot of those guys, they had these beautiful, luxurious boats, but they didn't really have time to enjoy them. They were working their companies and, and almost the yachts became sort of a, a way to launder money a little bit, you know, like where, where to put your money. And it was me and the crew on the boats in these kind of jobs that really enjoyed the boats. So there was this really wealthy guy that paid for this like, $25 million yacht and I was living on this yacht taking care of it. It's sort of like It's sort of like a dog, right? Like we got a new dog and You know if you hired a person to take care of that dog and all you did was go to it every so often Oh, you're such a cute dog You're not really can the dog will probably love the caretakers more than you the owner You know what I mean? And, and what, what does that really mean owner? Uh, it taught me that like Money is important, but it's not the end all. And you could you could have all the money in the world and buy this amazing, beautiful yacht, but if you don't have time to enjoy it and you're not taking the chance to to really enjoy it, then what's the point, you know? So that's a that's a total tangent, but I just kind of thought about it. Yeah, living on a yacht is amazing. So we're gonna go and see the yacht life here in uh, in China and how that's developing. Uh, let's see else. We're gonna take a ride around the Wenchang Aerospace City which is where all the rockets are shot off into space to drop off satellites and stuff for China. So that's going to be cool. I asked if I could interview an astronaut and I went way, I, went, I asked a lot, you know, I said, Hey, can I like talk to an astronaut? Can I like go and inspect their rockets? And they're, they're like, we're literally going to take a boat around that area and you're going to be able to talk about it, but you're not going to be able to go and set foot on there. And I was like, okay, okay. I see how that is. Uh, we're going to take a look at like the mangrove forests along uh, Linhai and talk about how mangroves are being used to shore up the um, the sediment. And I know a lot about, it's very cool because I know a lot about marine ecology and, and coral reefs and fish and, and uh, uh, biology in that area. Uh, what is, not biology, horticulture? No. What's the one for, for plants? Whatever. <laughs> Tell me, tell me what I'm missing. But the mangroves, if you guys don't know, mangroves are, are a type of plant that uh, that grow in salt, salt rich uh, water. And it's like you can have a lot of mangrove forests along the coast of Florida, but are in swamplands, even like uh, salty swamplands. But they, they, they are an important uh, linchpin in, in, in marine ecology. And we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna do some oyster farming. Um, then we're gonna take a look at the Sea Silk Road. You guys don't know this because you haven't seen the CCTV videos yet, but I actually went to an area around Chaozhou, an island called Nanao Island. It was part of my trip. And Nanao Island is an island that is significant for the Maritime Silk Road. Now, a lot of you guys know the, the Silk Road that goes up through the north of China and goes up, up through Xinjiang. That's one of the big factors why Xinjiang is so focused on right now with what's going on there. Um, and a lot of us in China think that uh, the Silk Road has a very important reason, uh, is, is a real important reason why that area is being focused on so much. There's a lot of crazy shit going on all over the world, but why is this focus on Xinjiang so much? Well, I think that one of the major things is that the, the Silk Road runs through there. It's a very important um, tributary. Tributary? Um, uh, Artery? Yeah, artery is a better word. Artery for commerce uh, to connect the Chinese to the, the, the east or the west. Anyways, there's a maritime Silk Road that goes along the coast of China all the way to the Middle East. And that, that's where the boats and stuff go. So there's a, a maritime Silk Road and there's a land Silk Road. And uh, when I went to Nanao Island, I, I was talking about Zhang He. Zhang He was a, a pirate in, in that area. 
and uh, he was famous. He's a famous pirate way, way back in the in the, in the old days. And um, I went to that Nano Island. I, I saw like the different structures on the island, but they also talked about this boat, which was the uh, Nano One. And uh, the Nano One was a uh, merchant ship that had a bunch of porcelain like almost a thousand years ago, and it sank, and it sort of disappeared from history until I think in the 80s, there were some fishermen that discovered some porcelain and more porcelain and more porcelain because there was like 40,000 pieces of porcelain that were being transported from Asia or along the Maritime Silk Road. And so this ship disappeared and reappeared recently. And there was all these um, like treasure hunters, you know, fishermen that were illegally scavenging from this historical landmark. Uh, the government had to come in and, and they actually raised the whole ship um, off the ground and then they found a place to put it and they have it in a museum. Now I, I was on that island I heard about the, um, the the ship, but I never got to see it. Well, this is gonna be give me a chance to see it Which is gonna give me a whole interesting perspective because I had I'd seen it through the CCTV trip and heard about it and I learned about it, but I never saw it so this will be able to fill in the blanks, but, but it'll be weird because The people watching the videos as I produce them now will see the CCTV footage after so there will be some sort of timeline mix up there but anyway we're going to go inspect the original the actual um museum where the nano number one is uh is there and i'll see all the different uh um, pieces of porcelain that came off that ship uh we're also going to go to a ship building base um where the big ships are built i'm really excited about that i told him that i have a lot of experience with being a first mate and traveling and also being in detroit which is a big uh, uh, freshwater a huge freshwater lake there so i've i've i'm big on shipping and water and and so i'll be able to kind of add a little bit of nuance to that t topic um we're gonna go to the huawei headquarters uh in shenzhen and uh Oh, let's see here. We're also going to go to Chanteau um, and, and do some things there. So maybe we're going to go back to Nano Island. So, so that is very cool. There's also a bunch of live streams I'm going to film with CGTN. Not like anything, but like tips for marine ecology and helping, you know, what do I think of this place and, and these kind of things. And it's just going to be me with the host from CGTN. You guys might know who they are. And we're going to be talking and doing some sort of fun little events with live streams. We're all going to be short videos and we're going to be doing long videos. I'm going to be all over the CGTN platform for a little while. And so you guys are going to know what's going on with that. So, so that is fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I hope you guys are as well. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to finish that around the 17th on the 17th. And then the 18th, I'm going to be flying to Shanxi province, which I've, we've been to Shanxi before with a project with Xinhua. This project's going to go from the 18th to the 21st. And this is going to be, you're going to definitely see it on my channel before um, before I actually produce it, uh, or before Xinhua produces it. But it's going to be a TV show <clears throat> concept, like a reality show, where I'm going to go to a local village called, let's see, uh, Yuanjia. I'm going to be going to a village called Yuanjia, and I'm going to, I'll just read it. The idea is you challenge the role of being an intern village head. From the perspective of a foreigner, observe the development of the local industry and the changes of the villagers' lives. Help the local villagers by giving them some advice and help Yuanjia village to make a new attempt of a more diversified and international development. Uh, they're gonna have a professional shooting crew um, and it will be on uh, the platform Xinhua. So um, that should be fun. They're, they'll put me in this place of like a local villager or a local village head. And so I'll be tasked with trying to help the village. I'll be helping them do certain things. She showed me an example of a similar project that they did. And so I'm really excited. It's very, very cool. So um, that's fun. So we'll be doing that in Xinhua. Um, Along the way of all of these projects, I plan to do uh, my vlogging, and I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try and make those vlogs a little bit easier for me to put on this channel. Um, the ones from CCTV are gonna be really well produced because I'm gonna have some content that I shot and also some content that they're helping me with, the CCTV crew. They kind of, it's, it's you've, you know about this already if you've heard it. 
But the Xinhua projects, their projects are focused on what they're doing. And I'm just going to be tertiary, like doing my thing and like talking and stuff. So I might interview some people. I might uh, show you different I'll, I'll take what they're telling me and I'll translate it into my own Jayo Nation vlog and then I'll be delivering it to you. So you might be getting some inside scoop on what they're producing, but also uh, my my opinions of, of what what's happening. So that's really, really fun. I'm really, really excited about that. Um, um, uh, beyond that, I, I don't know if you watched Nuance and I'm not telling everybody here to watch Nuance, but I, I I'm... I'm starting up a project for every so often producing a full-on Chinese spoken language video. And I, I'm i doing that for many reasons. Actually, I'm going to produce another video just basically sitting in the same spot for Nuance, the new channel. Um, that's going to be getting into more of how I conceptualize and put together these Chinese videos because they've been really useful for teaching me and advancing my already... Um, simple Chinese. Uh, so um, it's been really, I, I would recommend, well, see, I'm, I'm infusing video into my learning of Chinese and by combining the two, it's really helpful because I, I love making videos and I don't necessarily love the process of learning uh, things like this. My mind does not uh, work very well for memorizing stuff and learning Chinese is a lot about memorizing stuff. Um, I am creative, which is great because Chinese characters are like basically pictures that tell stories. So that's helpful. But I'm infusing my love of video into my love or my desire to learn more Chinese and we're putting that together. And so I'm going to make another video on Nuance very soon with similar updates talking about how these trips are going to be interpreted through Nuance. Because Nuance is the channel that I'm doing more political and topical stories that are focused more on things that are hand happening here in China and my opinions on more, uh, maybe, maybe less travel-y and more, more opinionative about social issues. So I'll make another video about that very soon. Actually, let's see, 17 minutes. This is getting quite long. So um, look forward to that. Uh, ch check out my first Chinese spoken language video. I, 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 I tried to uh, use infuse what I already knew and, and also extrapolate and learn a lot more in each one of these. As a matter of fact, the script for, for the next episode is, is, <laughs> it's pretty, it's, it's got a lot, all that yellow there are new phrases that I want to learn. So yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. I won't be coming out tomorrow, but <laughs> I think I'd like to show the process cause it's kind of fun. So uh, let's see. Um, I want to thank everybody on my Patreon. Um, you guys have, have been hanging out with me for a long time, and I really, really do appreciate you very much. I know I haven't been giving you as much uh, uh, content on the channel as, as I normally do. I will tell you, though, that when I'm on these trips, if you guys are a member of my Patreon, you're going to be getting inundated with cool audio podcasts. I'm going to be telling a story of the trip every single day. Whether I do a vlog or not, the Patreon is going to be full of exclusive podcasts. Basically, I just sit there with my phone and, I, hey guys, I'm Matt with the exclusive Patreon podcast. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, we had a really fun day today. We went to the islands and I looked at a bunch of corals. And so I, I record about 10 or 15 minutes ideally a day because it's fun for me to actually tell everybody out there that's interested what's going on in my life and what I've seen. Um, it's just being at home and, and working and stuff. Uh, it's, it's been tough to kind of put these things out regularly with new, new information. But now that I'll be on the road, you'll be seeing some of that stuff. So uh, I think patrons, you'll be very happy with this trip because I'll be producing a lot of those podcasts. Um, uh, so thank you again to my patrons for sticking around, and I really do appreciate you. Um, the future of Jayo Nation is, is very bright, but it needs to, we need to get past this pandemic, you know. And uh, I have a bunch of these projects, like I said, that will be delivering really, really good quality content to you in the next little while. These videos for Xinhua and, uh, and C CGTN will be populating Jayo Nation for a considerable amount of time. So I think what you'll see is you'll see these, these two series is this uh, CGTN, then the Xinhua, then my CCTV trip will come out after that. And then we should have really cool stuff on Jio Nation for the foreseeable future. And then hopefully by the end of that, we'll be back on the road in uh, on the Jio World Tours cycling tour. So there is one 
personal thing that's going to be happening in between the two. You're going to hear more about it. It's a real, it's a real serious thing, and um, it'll be happening after the Xinhua trip. I, I don't want to talk about it too much, but you'll, I'm sure that you'll be finding out more about what that's, what, what, what's happening with that. But uh, it's a personal issue, family issue. Besides that, the dog is doing okay. Um, the cat is doing okay. Annie is doing okay, and Eve is doing okay. Uh, tomorrow, I think I might be going out with uh, Eva on a, on a school trip, and I was told that I could bring the camera. So maybe we'll have one more fun family-esque vlog before, the, um, before I start going on these trips. 20 minutes. I can't cut these damn things short. I just always talk so long. I like to talk. YouTube doesn't like talkers, though. They like shorter videos. Anyways, two two other things, just for fun. I've had a video, uh, if you don't know who he is, Casey Neistat is a, is a vlogger. He's basically my inspiration for doing these sort of daily vlogs back when I was doing more daily vlogs. And he always had in his studio a video of The Godfather playing on a loop, always, always in the background. And, and uh, I just thought I'd tell you guys. The Edge of Tomorrow, what a great movie. Uh, that's a it's it's Tom Cruise where he basically gets locked into like a Groundhog Day esque kind of li reliving the same day over and over and over. I just love that movie. I cannot get tired of that movie. I put it on my screen in the corner, and I just play it while I'm editing or whatever. I look over, and it doesn't matter what scene it is, what part of the movie it is. I am always sort of interested and engaged, and I can always find something interesting. If you guys haven't seen The Edge of Tomorrow, it's a great movie. Um, second. There's a series on TV that I've been watching that I don't th I don't know is it popular in the West I have no idea uh, but I really like it's on Sci-Fi and it's called Resident Alien it's about an alien who crash lands on Earth he's stuck here he's like a villain but also a sympathetic character because he wants to wipe out the entire human race because those aliens have decided that America or the world is is finished let's get rid of it and let's start from scratch and so he's scra he's crashed so he can't finish his mission and he he, he t assumes the body of some uh doctor and hilarity it's a funny it's a funny series and it's it's dumb funny like you have to suspend disbelief because um obviously people don't recognize that he's an alien and they should because he, even though he looks like a human he acts like a like, a, like an alien and the way he's like he actually has sex in it and he has to deal with hormones and all these things that he's manifested as as this human body and it's so funny some of the comments that he makes is it's very deadpan humor and i love it if you guys have a chance resident aliens very funny tell me your opinion of resident alien so i'm going to stop this i'm going to go and do a video for nuance and uh, I, on nuance, I'm going to talk a lot about my Chinese project here and, and talk about how, um, how I do these videos and, and, and why they somehow look a little bit staged and they're maybe not as natural. And uh, anyways, anyways, uh, we'll talk to you later. Have a good one, Jayo, and uh, we'll catch you later. If you want to go, to, go to nuance. I'll probably be publishing this video and then the nuance video after because they're fairly easy. They're just me talking. So thanks again. Take it easy, Jayo. And uh, yeah. Oh. One of the things on the on the project, you see my Arhu over there. One of the one of the things I'm going to be doing on the CGTN, we're going to be going and looking at different people making musical instruments. I might be doing scuba diving. There's a lot of things I might be doing on this trip uh, with some CGTN people. But um, we're going to learn how a guy makes uh, Arhu out of coconuts, and so I might be playing the Arhu, which is something you guys have been waiting for for waiting to hear. I've been practicing a lot, um, but I still think. I, I'm, you know, I, I have this thing. I just don't want to do something until I'm perfect at it. Um, and, you know, you're always striving for perfection. Anyways, Jayo, have a good one, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Um, thanks. Bye.